A regional police officer who's an amateur meteor hunter has found the first sample of the Mother's Day meteorite that lit up the sky over Western Australia just over a week ago. The meteorite, about the size of a tennis ball, has been found on a salt lake south of the breakaways, 470 k's east of Perth. A team from Curtin University had mapped the meteorite's trajectory to the salt lake but were beaten to it by Marcus Scott, who's a police officer from Ravensthorpe, 200 kilometres south of the impact site. And Dr Eleanor Sanson is with the Curtin University team and is the director of the Australian Desert Fireball Network, and she joins us now from Perth. Ellie Sampson, g'day. So how cool was that initial vision of the media, that green light streaking across the sky back several days ago? It was really impressive. Uh, it's always amazing to see one of these fireballs uh, come through the atmosphere. It's so rare to actually spot one um, as a human rather than all the cameras that we have out there. Uh, it must have been an incredible sight. It was a really long one. And was, the, I think it was just over nine seconds long. And, and the, yeah, the colour was, was amazing busy. too, huh? Yeah, that bright green light is um, its just a representative of the speed of that thing coming in. And, uh, it's going um, around 15 kilometres per second, so pretty damn fast. Okay, now, how the hell did you actually spot the remnants of it? I, I just want to take the audience through a couple of images uh, to show them uh, the chances of you actually finding it. So number one shows a vast expanse of countryside that bits of this media could have fallen in. Number two, what you, what you saw from the air, how did you pick that? And then number three, what was in the salt lake the size of a tennis ball? How did you find that? <laughs> it's kind of what we, the magic of this program that we have set up. We have cameras all the way across uh, the Australian wheat belt, the WA wheat belt, Nullarbor, South Australia, designed to take pictures of these really, really bright shooting stars uh, that we call fireballs with the aim of being able to, uh, yeah, triangulate how they come through the atmosphere, figure out where they might land on the ground uh, and backtrack the orbit of where it came from uh, as well. So we actually can grab that hand sample and know where in the solar system that came from. So you were in a plane but looking for this, t this tiny speck and what was it like when you, when you realised what it was? We were really excited. So normally when we uh, figure out where these things land, uh, they come through and stop. This one stopped burning at about 26 kilometres altitude and it gets blown around by the wind as it falls down to the ground. And that really gives us the biggest uncertainty. And depending on how big it is, it can get blown really, really quite far. Uh, and we have this strewn field on the ground, this fall line on the ground. And we released that publicly because it was actually a 30 kilometre long fall line. And for us, normally we search... Uh, things that are around one to two square kilometre area by foot or by drone. But 30 kilometres long, that was way too much. And seeing as there were salt lakes in the area, we thought, why not? Let's give it a try, see if we can see a splash in the lake. Uh, when these things come down, they, um, they're coming in, they are coming in yet about, this one's about 14, 15 kilometres per second as it hit the atmosphere. But by the time it hits the ground, it's only going about 300 kilometres an hour. So relatively slow, uh, not expecting a massive crater, but yeah, weren't sure if we were going to actually spot anything from the plane. And when we saw a few very distinctive uh, splash spots, we got very, very excited. Yeah. And as you were up there in the plane looking for it, you could see someone walking <laughs> towards it and you're like, oh no, someone's beaten us to it. Oh, I was so excited for them. I couldn't believe someone had actually gone out to give it a try. And seeing some lonesome person on the middle of this massive salt lake was, was a sight to be uh, seen um, in itself. And we really, uh, we spotted a, a really impressive splash and we started circling that area. I think we did about six passes over that spot. We thought, oh, wow, if they see us, maybe they'll come this way and, and pick it up for us so we don't have to. And uh, yeah, the next morning woke up to... Um, Facebook, um, everyone is sending me Facebook notifications of, uh, hey, look, someone found it. And I'm, I'm too excited to, to mind who got it there, who got there first. And so ha have you held this bit of rock yourself yet? Haven't got that far yet, but I'm um, looking forward to it. And um, it's actually was found in a different spot to the one that we saw. So we do have a team going out tomorrow who are going to go and follow up the one that uh, we found uh, for us. Size doesn't really matter, quantity usually doesn't matter, but in this case, we think it's quite a rare type. So we might be going out, we're gonna go out and pick up our one that we spotted as well. Um, and so there's enough for all of the international community uh, who have studied meteorites to have a piece. 
Yeah, so what can you tell from what you've seen of the photos of it? It's, it's really quite hard to tell. We can definitely say it's a meteorite. The the splash, we've had quite a lot of comments saying, oh, no, no way, that's a meteorite. It surely would have made a bigger dent than that. But uh, actually, yeah, when it hits the, the salt lake, it really does look like someone's just chucked a bit of dirt on the ground or thrown a rock um, just out of an airplane. It's, it's reached terminal velocity when it lands. Uh, and they're really distinctive that they have this black shell on the outside called a fusion crust. So when they're coming in, they're burning really, really hot about 5,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, and so they, it makes this outer um, black shell. So the fact that it's in the ground buried just a little bit with um, that black outer shell is definitely a meteorite. Uh, it's really hard to classify the type that it is so far, but the orbit that it came from is what makes it really special uh, so far. And what can you tell us about that orbit? So usually these asteroids that come in and drop a meter out on the ground are somewhere from the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, this one actually has an orbit very similar to the Earth, if you're looking from above. It actually kind of sticks out and goes um, way above the plane of our solar system, but it actually comes from within the Earth. So Earth is actually the furthest out it went, and then it went closer to the sun and came back out again. So it didn't come from out out there in the solar system, it came from the inside. So it's it's a little bit different and really excited to see what type it is. And so how big what do you think it was when it entered the atmosphere of Earth? Oh, so that probably was around 500, um, sorry, 50 to 60 centimetres, half a metre across uh, as it hit the top. And as it came in, every time that uh, vision of the original fireball, where you see those flashes, every time it flashes, it's fragmenting into lots of little pieces. Uh. So there's definitely lots, lots of material out there on the ground. Um, usually it loses about 95% of its mass as it comes through the atmosphere. But that, that shallow trajectory that it had meant that, that it had lots of time to fragment and it's left that, this lovely little trail of, of pieces behind it. And is that piece that this guy found worth much money? Depends what it's made of. Uh, sometimes they can have really quite a great value for us. The scientific value, the value of having something with an orbit is incredible. Uh, this was found in, uh, in WA, so it will belong to the WA Museum. I'm really hoping that there'll be a, a fun exhibit up for that um, with his name on there as the, the, the main finder, which will be really exciting. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, you must have the coolest title of anyone on the planet, Director of the Desert Fireball Network. <laughs> How do you get to be a DFN director? Oh, it's been great fun. It's been 10 years in the making. We've had uh, cam cameras out since um, 2014, 2015. And, um, yeah, it's, it's great fun. I'm, and I think what I, I'm a planetary scientist working on planetary defence. So how can I be cool on that? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Ellie Sansom, thanks so much for having a chat to us from Perth. Thanks for having a joke.